Hello everyone. So I got this email today and I wanted to read it to you guys. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to kind of read the abbreviated version just for the purposes of, well, brevity. But it was something I wanted to share with you all because it was kind of interesting and it was a gentleman asking me to do a video on this particular subject. So here we go. I'm 24 years old. I'm building two businesses, one online and other offline. I've been working every single day, Sunday to Sunday, since 2016, in order to build a successful business. I have zero friends, zero social life, and zero photos on my Instagram, because my life is just work. I know that Rollo says that men must go out, game, and spin plates, but it's hard when you have zero social life and girls eventually catch on that I'm a loser socially. I feel like I am invisible to women. I am confused because I don't know what and how I should do to reverse this scenario. I'm good looking, the right weight, and I'm tall, six foot one. But I'm not funny and not engage women in conversations. I'm more introvert. Where slash how should I work on to change that? Where is my strength as a man? I don't see advantages in being a man. I know that there are lots of guys in the same situation. Could you do a video helping 20 year old guys in this same situation? Certainly. Actually, this is, I'm kind of glad this guy emailed me because I was so, so socially isolated when I was young and I was so introverted. And before I became an exotic dancer, I was working in a nursing home. And I remember that I didn't have any kind of social life. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have anyone I could hang out with. And so people always knew that they could call me when they needed someone to fill a shift at the last minute. And so I ended up working all these crazy shifts and it was just insane. I remember working like a series of just really, really badly timed out shifts, like a night shift and then an evening shift and then a really early morning shift and then another night shift and like just these crazy times. And I hadn't had time between all these shifts that I kept picking up to sleep. And I got home and I was going to go to my parents' house and have coffee with them really quick because it was the morning. I had just gotten off of a really long night shift. It was like an evening shift and a night shift back to back or something. And um, I went, I went, I, I left my car running and I went into my apartment and I woke up and I was lying on the floor with my scrub shirt still on and my pants half on. Like I had taken off my scrub pants and I had started putting on a pair of jeans and I had somehow fallen asleep, like passed out on the floor with my clothes half on. And so I kind of groggily got up, I changed my shirt out, I finished putting my pants on, and I was looking for my keys and I couldn't find them. And then I realized that I had left them in the car, the car was still running, the apartment door was open, <laughs> like, it, it, was, it wasn't open, it was unlocked, and I had just, I had just passed out. I was so tired from working these crazy, insane shifts and people were always calling me and telling me, hey, we need you to work this shift. Hey, we need you to work this shift because it was a really crappy job. You know, nursing home, nurses aid, really bad work, like underpaid and then they rush you and they overwork you and it was just nuts. And so people were always calling in sick because they just didn't want to go to work and somebody needed to come into the nursing home because somebody needed to do the job. That somebody was me. Um, it was, it was ridiculous. No, I had no social life. And so when you talk about having zero social life, dude, I can relate. I totally know what you're talking about. And it's not good. And it's very difficult to break out of that habit. It's very difficult to, to get out of being in a place where you don't have a social life and where your work-life balance has gone way off the rails. And so I would absolutely love to talk about that. Um, few things that I need to get out of the way right away. Number one, if you're 24 and if you're if you're any guy watching this who's in his early to mid 20s you have time i know you've probably heard that before i know it's probably like the most frustrating thing to hear but it is a true thing to hear and it's something to bear in mind you have time you will be far more attractive to women at the age of 34 than you are at the age of 24 so time is on your side if you're a woman that's not the case. If you're a woman, you're in a rush to get everything done and get everything like settled by the time you turn 30. If you haven't gotten married by the time you turn 30 and had at least one kid by the time you turn 30, it's kind of like, okay, what have you been doing with yourself? <laughs> you know? If you're a man, that's not the case. So that's one of the advantages of being a man. You have more time to work with. You have a wider window to get your life stuff accomplished. 
And it sounds like you're, you know, to the, to the guy who wrote this letter, it sounds like he's actually being very smart about this by trying to get this business started up and make everything work. It's hard to run a business. It's hard to get a business off the ground. If you do this and if you succeed, that's only going to benefit you when you're 34 and you're still good looking, you're still tall, you're still handsome, and you also have this business that's, you know, doing well to support you financially. That's going to benefit you. All of this is good, but it's also probably very frustrating when you're 24 to be told, oh, just wait a decade. It'll be okay. <laughs> like, that's, that's probably got to be one of the most frustrating things in the world. So let's bear in mind that things will get easier as you age and let's work on things that you can do immediately to kind of make your life a little more bearable until you magically hit that decade mark because things don't change magically on their own like change is something that you have to actually kind of consciously pursue so it's not necessarily even a wise thing to just sit back on your heels and go oh pff, I'll worry about all this in a decade First thing I would recommend as far as things you can do right now in your life to kind of try and get you a little bit closer to being able to have relationships with girls. Um, this book right here, it's uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. I did a review of it and I don't feel like that review really did it justice because of the format of the book. He spends a lot of time telling you a thing that you should be doing, then telling an anecdote about a guy who did that thing and then telling you a series of exercises that you can do to achieve that thing that he's telling you to do. And it's like, that's not the makings of a good book review, but it is the makings of an excellent self-help book. Um, I would think of a book like that as being like, <sighs> Avoiding Beta Behavior 101. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have any of these behaviors, and I'm not suggesting that you have any beta traits or anything. I'm saying that if you haven't already read that book, it's a really good idea to read through that book and it will catch any beta behaviors you might have. If you have them, if they're there, this book will help you identify them and then it will give you exercises that you can do right now in your life to kind of comb out those little tangles and things that you don't really like, the things that are beta, that are unattractive to women. You can get rid of those now so that as time passes, you will habitually not perform those those damaging and unhelpful behaviors. And so it's like it's like unlearning a bad habit. The sooner you start unlearning it, the sooner it's not going to be a bad habit for you anymore. So I definitely recommend taking a little bit of time, combing through this book really quickly, just kind of taking a look at it, seeing if you do any of these things. Um, one chapter I would definitely recommend is, I can't remember which chapter it is actually, it's the chapter where he talks about masculinity and working on embracing your masculinity. I think that one in particular was very interesting, but I think it might actually be particularly useful too, because in the letter this guy talked about, um, he talked about how he didn't really see the advantages in being a man. And I can see that. In today's society, I can totally see how it's not immediately obvious why it's a good thing to be a man. But there are many, many benefits to being a man. One of them, you have time. You have a lot more time to operate in when it comes to getting those those major steps in life taken care of, like, you know, finding a wife, having kids, you know, getting married, all that good stuff. You You have more time to fit those into your life if you want to. And so that's a good thing. But there, there are a lot of other benefits, like embracing your masculinity. That's just, that's just a wonderful thing. It's a good thing to be a man. And I think that, I think this book will, will probably help you with, with that. Um, if you've done that and say you've combed through that book and looked at yourself and said, you know what, I really don't think that any of the problems that he's talking about in this book are my problem. Well, congratulations. That means you, you have a lot less work to do. So that's a good thing. Um, the next thing that I would recommend is possibly taking a look at your work-life balance. And people like to talk about work-life balance, and here's the thing. Sometimes you get to a point in life, especially if you're trying to start up a business, where your work-life balance is going to be completely wonky and there's just not much you can do about it. Sometimes, sometimes that's kind of okay, and when you're a young man, that might be one of those times. I mean, that's a personal decision that you need to make after looking at your life. But 
if you're trying to start up a business, it's possible that you're just at a point where you're going to be working on it for a while and you're going to be making sacrifices in other areas of your life and your work-life balance is going to be extremely off. And that might be something you want to do or it might be something where you're looking at your work-life balance and saying, okay, it's off, it's too off. Like there's, there's too much of a good thing going on here. And, you know, certainly in later points in life, you are eventually going to need to rein in your work-life balance. At some point sooner or later, you're going to need to to get that thing under control. The, the, the difficult thing is, and this is one of the problems that men do run into, it's like you, you've got to earn the money, you've got to keep the business afloat, you've got to do the things you have to do. So as easy as it is for women, and it seems to be a lot of women a lot of the time going, oh, your work-life balance is off while they're while they're sitting back on the couch and having their husband pay all the bills and life is just easy for them. You know, when, when things are easy, it's very easy to look at it and say, oh, well, your work-life balance is off. Um, work-life balance is tricky. Like work-life balance is really, really hard. And if you don't have a social life, then you don't even have an excuse to, to try and pull your, your life side of the balance into, into any kind of balance with your job. But it is kind of an important thing to work on just just a little bit, just maybe. And so if you are looking and saying, maybe I should look at my work-life balance and maybe I should spend just a little bit more time working on the life side of that balance, I would very strongly recommend that you find a either a hobby or some form of exercise that you find particularly interesting and engaging. Um, exercise is always a good one because it's healthy for you, but maybe it's a hobby. Maybe it's like, I mean, there's so many things. Maybe it's some type of music you always wanted to play, um, an instrument. Um, maybe it's, maybe it's D and D, maybe it's mountain climbing. Maybe it's, you know, find something that's interesting to you. And the thing about that is if it's interesting and you can get excited about it, then you can talk about it in a way that is energetic and engaging. And that will make it easier to talk to people. And if it's interesting to you, there's also probably other people that find it interesting. So there's probably some sort of social group based around this activity. So, um, you know, if, if, if it's mountain climbing, there's probably some sort of mountain climbing society you can get into. If it's D&D, obviously you're going to be wanting to play with other people. Um, if it's some sort of sport, there are probably sports aficionados who can get into it. Um, if it's if it's any like anything, any kind of activity that you find intensely interesting, there's probably some sort of social group you can you can go into beekeeping. If you're interested in beekeeping, there's probably a beekeeper society. In fact, I looked it up. There is a local beekeeper society where I live, and unfortunately, it's it's down the road a ways, <laughs> so I've never attended a meeting. But I've always been interested in coming over and checking it out. If it's, if it's something that's interesting to you and there's a social group around it, then you can go to that social group and you can practice socializing with the people in that group. You already have something in common that you're interested in that you can talk about, and that's good. Going out to one of these places, like meetings, groups, that you're going to be able to find people who are interested in something that you're interested in, it sets up... It sets you up with a really easy kind of social framework where you can socialize with other people. And I was I was very introverted for a very long part of my life. I'm still extremely introverted. Nothing's changed. But if you practice talking to people, then you won't feel as rusty when you walk up to a new person and say hello to them. You won't feel as awkward when you walk up to a new person and say hello to them. You might not necessarily feel awkward with women if you're if you're handsome and you're tall and all these things, but it can still be, you can still feel rusty when you're talking to people. At least that's been my experience. I feel very rusty talking to people if I haven't been going out and socializing with people. In fact, that's one of my personal goals that I've been working on for my own improvement in my own life. It's very easy for me to just not talk to people. And this year, 2020, has been like one of those years where it's like, it's extremely easy to just not talk to people. <laughs> and so I've been forcing myself as uncomfortable as it is for me to go out and socialize with people. It's like, oh, I don't want to. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I don't feel like it. I make myself do it. And the more I do it, the easier it becomes. And the more socially fluid and relaxed I feel in conversations with people. And I mean, bear in mind, this isn't, 
this isn't a way to meet women. I mean, it is a way to meet women, but you're not doing this so you can meet women, not at this point. You're doing this so you can build up kind of a social, a social calm and a sort of social fluidity that doesn't happen as, as, as easily if you're out of practice. If you're not well practiced socializing with people, it's really hard to get it working. And so um, finding a hobby and getting into this hobby and getting involved in social groups that focus on this hobby, it will help you socialize with people, it will help you make friends. And when you have friends and you're socializing with people, it will make you more socially fluid. Yes, you might meet some beautiful young woman who's interested in the same thing you're interested in, and then you both have something in common that you can talk about, so that'll be really nice. But even if you don't meet a girl who's interested in this sort of thing, you suddenly have a network of friends, you have fun stories about this interesting thing that you're interested in that you can talk to girls about, and so if you do end up meeting girls, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I was out with my buddies, we were doing this thing because we all like cave exploring. And so we were out exploring this cave and we had this really cool adventure that was interesting to us that we all thought was fun. And it makes you that much more, it, it gives you, I don't know if I really believe in the idea of social proof, but it gives you, you know, social proof. It, it kind of lets people know that you've been socializing, that you're socially fluid, that you have friends. Um, even better, you might at some point end up going out to a bar or a club with all your friends from your interesting hobby that you've developed. And so then you have a social group and you're not just hanging out at a bar all alone. This is, this is the best advice that I think I can give. And this is one of the reasons, like, this is what I did when I became an exotic dancer. It was like, I need to have an excuse to go out and socialize with people. And I'm not remotely inclined to go out and socialize with people. It's a really hard thing to do. And so finding something that will make you do it, especially if you're working these crazy hours, you, you almost need something to kind of drag you out the door. And so if it's something that you're, that, something you've always been interested in, some sort of hobby or skill set that you've always wanted to learn, it's, it's going to give you that little extra bit of motivation to just drag you out the door so that you can go and interact with other human beings, which for me at least, it's like pulling teeth. Like I really like my friends. I really like my friends. I'm so tired and I just don't want to talk to anybody today. And it's not that I don't like them. It's just that I, I bet they're busy. I bet they're not in the mood to talk to me right now. I bet they have work going on or something. I bet they're tired. I, I bet, you know, a million excuses not to talk to my friends. If I have something that's dragging me out, if I have some sort of set schedule where it's like I absolutely have to talk to someone this week or, you know, I haven't had that problem in a long time. Like there was a while where it was like I, I needed a job to actually literally drag me to work so that I could socialize with people. Now it's like, okay, I've, I've gotten onto the mystery five second rule where it's like, if I think I should be texting someone, I need to text them in five seconds or less because if I don't text them in five seconds or less, I'll get distracted by something and then I won't text them. <laughs> but you, you kind of, if you're a very, very introverted person, I think sometimes you need little rules that you set up for yourself to kind of force yourself to interact with people socially because it's so easy to find excuses not to do it. And it's good for you because human beings are social animals. And it's kind of necessary for our, our mental health and well-being. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my advice to you. Don't necessarily focus on, on women. I mean, women is eventually the goal, but that's more of a long-term goal right now because you do have a little bit more time to work in. Make women your long-term goal and focus instead on just getting out, socializing, meeting people, maybe making some good friends, building some relationships with people, finding yourself a community to interact with. And then women will come more easily at that point. And the thing to bear in mind, of course, is you're not doing this just so that you can get women. <laughs> you're doing this for you. You're doing this for yourself so that you can have, you can have friends. You can have, you know, kind of a little bit of fun in your life. Maybe your work is fun. Maybe your, your business that you're starting up is fun and exciting to you, but sometimes it's good to just kind of switch things up a little bit. And, uh, I think it'll just make it easier for you to interact more fluidly with women. And I wish you the very best of luck. I hope that works for you. I hope this is good advice to you. Um, for everybody else who's watching, 
if you have any good advice um, for this gentleman and for other gentlemen who clicked on this video for probably the same reasons this guy sent me this email, um, please, please write it down in the comments section. And for anybody who is seeking advice by watching this video, please check the comments section. I've had a lot of really great comments from people who've watched my videos over the years. Yeah, it's been years now, over the years. And um, I'm sure that some of them would have some really excellent advice. Um, I wish you all the best and I'll talk to you later.